Hello, eighth graders. Mr. Rolson here. Pythagorean theorem. This was the last couple uh, lessons we've done on this. Um, last couple videos. Uh, try these out on your own. These should be problems that you know how to do. If you don't, you may want to review one of the two previous videos from uh, December third or December first. I think were the other two days. So yeah, um, I've been doing a thing lately. I've got a uh, piano in my classroom these days, and it's not going to be there forever, but it's there now, and I like it. It's cool. So um, while you guys are working on the warm-up, I'll play a song on the piano to see if I can remember the songs I used to play when I was in piano lessons. We will see how it goes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what song did I know I can play well? Hmm. Darn, I can't any of my songs. <laughs> oh, I played that in the last video I did. terrible at the piano uh, in this video. Anyway, that should have been enough time for you guys to finish doing these. Well, it may not have been enough time, you know, I think about it. I just looked at the time on the video, and this is about three minutes. So three minutes that, for some of you, that might be enough time to finish all four problems here. If it isn't enough for you, pause the video now and finish them on your own. I will go over uh, th two of these with you. We'll go over one and two with you guys. Actually, we'll go one, two, and three, four, I want you to be doing on your own, all right? So, problem number one. Let's start by labeling the triangle. We call these A and B, C is C. Notice that the rest of these do not have them labeled using A, B, or C. That's so typical that uh, you're not going to actually be told, hey, this is the, uh, this one, this one's the hypotenuse. It's something they expect you to find by looking at the right angle. So. We set this up, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is 4, so 4 squared. b is 6, so 6 squared. 4 plus squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. 4 squared, 16. 6 squared is 50, is 15. Yeah. 36. 16 plus 36 equals c squared. 16 plus 36, that's 52, equals c squared. Take the square root of each side. C equals square root 52. And you're welcome to leave it like that. There's no reason to change it. 
if we needed to estimate it, we could. It would be about 7.2-ish. Um, yeah. Problem number two, 3, 4, and x. So this is A, this is B, and here's C, our hypotenuse. Um, so you should have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. And you replace the numbers. 3 squared, 9, 4 squared, 16, and that equals x squared. 9 plus 16 is 25 equals x squared. Um, yeah. And then we do the square root of each side. So x equals 5. This is one of our Pythagorean triples. In fact, on this problem, if you recognize that it was a Pythagorean triple, then you could get uh, credit on that right there. Um, three, four, five. So you just write Pythagorean triple. Don't do any of the formulas or work at all. Just write down as a triple. That's the whole point of the triples is that you don't have to do the formula if it's a triple. It's sort of a shortcut, really. OK. Um, yeah, let's move on. Today, we're going to learn other ways to use Pythagorean theorem. Specifically, we'll be looking at if you have the hypotenuse and you're just trying to find one of the legs. Box tops. Box tops. Always I'm collecting those. Teddy bears. If you have teddy bears to bring in, December 11th is the last day for that. Bring those into your first period class. Um, yeah. Penny Wars. That's a new one that's on here. Uh, collecting money. It's for the same charity the teddy bears are going to, which is a shelter for uh, children and mothers that are fleeing from abusive families and stuff. Uh, Penny Wars is benefiting that as well. It's money. Uh, you can bring in any type of money you want, but the key is pennies are positive points in Penny Wars, whereas any other money is negative. So like a penny, that's plus one point. Ten pennies, plus ten points. A dime, minus ten points. So the goal is, it's tenth period, bring in as many pennies as you can to your tenth period class, and then put other money in your other classes. So if you see that one of your teachers earlier in the day, maybe your uh, second period teacher has a lot of pennies in his jar, maybe you'll want to uh, bring in a dollar to put in there to cancel out his pennies to make that work better, uh, to, you know, sabotage him or whatever. Um, feel free to sabotage me. I do not have a 10th period class, um, so there's no major reason to sabotage me, but if you feel like it, you're welcome to. I, I'm not going to stop anyone from donating to charity, all right? Penny Wars, leaving, always let me know if you're leaving for the end of the class period. Quizzes, always make sure you're keeping up to date on your quizzes. Homework, make sure that you're uh, remembering to stay up to date on your homework as well. And last thing, oh, three good things. I've really, like, I know this is my good thing in one of my other lessons, but I've really enjoyed having this piano in my classroom uh, for the time being. I know at some point someone's going to want it back, at some point it's going to, you know, be a problem or whatever, but for now it's been a nice thing and I enjoy it. So, yep. Okay. Check out this problem here. Label the sides A, B, and C like you normally would. We already have one of them labeled A for you. And see if you can see what's different about this problem compared to the other ones. And see if you can set up the formula correctly. And if you're really adventurous, try solving it too. Um, I find that some of my students have trouble even setting up the formula for the situation, while other students uh, are able to solve it right away. Uh, we're all at different levels of math, and that's fine. Anyway, so pause the video, try it out on your own, see, as, see how much progress you can make on it. Okay, we're back. So we have, as always, it's the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is a. 15, we'll call that b, and 17, we'll call c. So a squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. Now, we need to square all those. If you have a calculator handy, that'd be very helpful. Um, just multiply. If it doesn't have a square button on it, which it may not, just do 15 times 15, you should get 225. 17 times 17, 289. I actually had calculators out for this uh, lesson. Uh, we didn't get them out today, but uh, for, yeah. Well, I can't hand out calculators through YouTube, can I? It's kind of tricky. A squared plus 225 equals 289. So you are welcome to use a calculator. You need to subtract the 289 from each side, or the 225 from each side. Leaving us a squared equals 289 minus 225, 64. Now we do the square root of each side, a equals 8. This is actually another triple. We have seen several triples. Um, that's what that number 0 is for. Have somewhere your list of triples and know where it is so you can come back to it because there will be a quiz where you need to have these memorized. Some people ask me, 
How do I figure out the triples? I'm not sure how to figure those out. It's not something you figure out. It's something that you have memorized. It'd be like if someone asked me, how do you figure out uh, 5 plus 5? Well, I just know that 5 plus 5 is 10. Uh, I guess to figure out, I could count it up. Uh, but if someone asks me, how do you figure out the correct spelling for the word, okay, what's a tricky word? Um, xylophone. I don't figure out the spelling for the word xylophone. I know that it starts with an X, and then a Y, then an L, then an O, then phone. That part makes pretty good sense. P H O N E. Not sure why xylophone was the word I went to there, but there are some things that you figure out, there are other things that you have memorized. Pythagorean triples, that's one that you have memorized. Uh, so, work on memorizing those. First one, this was in the warm up, 3, 4, 5. Second one, this was in the lesson last time, uh, the problem that we had with the ladder and the bushes and all that. 5, 12, 13. Third one we haven't learned yet. The fourth one is actually 8, 15, 17. I kind of went out of order on this for some reason. Not sure why, but I did. Oh, I felt like this triangle looked more like an 8, 15, 17 than the other one. Uh, we'll talk more about those in a little bit. First, I want you to try doing these two triangles. They're both set up very similar to, similar to this one that you're going to be using kind of the same method where you already have the hypotenuse and you have to solve for one of the legs. So try out 6 and 7 here. Pause the video, try them on your own, try to at least get the equation set up, at least get the triangle labeled, see how much progress you can make. Okay, back. So, in this one, I would label this, I don't know, A, B, C, that works. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 7, B is X. Notice that I do replace it with the letter that it is there. B with X equals C squared. Or not C squared, C is 25. Blech. It's been a long day. So 7 squared, 49, plus X squared equals 25 squared, 625. Subtract 49 from each side. So X squared equals, that ends up being 576. Take the square root of each side. If at any point while I'm going over a problem, you suddenly realize that you do know how to do that problem, just pause the video and finish it on your own, because that gives you a great chance to learn it better than you would if I just do it for you. Do the square roots, x equals square root 576, which is 24. And that's that. In fact, that is our third uh, Pythagorean triple, 7, 24, 25. These four you should have memorized. You should know all four of them. Number seven, we have x, 12, and 15. So we call it a, b, C. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so A, that's our X. B is 12. C is 15. Square the numbers. 12 squared is 144. 15 squared is 225. Subtract 144 from each side. And that gives you X squared equals 81. Take the square root of each side. And x equals square root of 81, which is 9. x equals 9. This one's also a triple, actually, because all three numbers are natural numbers. However, well, we'll talk about it. On this page, put away your notes for a second and see how much of the Pythagorean triples you can remember. Even if it's only one or two of the numbers in one of the triples, that's still good, because that's one or two more than you had before you learned it, you know? So, see what you can remember, try writing it down, or thinking of it, yeah. So, the three tri four triples, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. The 9, 12, 15 that we just saw, that's actually the same as this one, but tripled. If you multiply it by 3, it gives you this. 3 times 3, 9, 4 times 3, 12, 5 times 3, 15. If you take any triple and multiply all three numbers by the same thing, then you get a new triple. Now, it has to be multiplied by the same thing. I sometimes have students that want to multiply each number by itself, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and 5 times 5. That doesn't work because the 3 multiplied by a different number than the 4 did, and the 4 multiplied by a different number than the 5 did. So you have to multiply it by the same number. Let's say you multiply them all by uh, 7. So 3 times 7, 21. 4 times 7, 28. 5 times 7, 35. Uh, 5, 12, 13. Try making a new triple based off of that. If you multiply it by 2, you might have gotten 10, 24, 26. 
If you multiply by 5, you might have gotten 25, 60, 65. We will have a quiz on this. The first part of the quiz, I will give you the first number in each sequence. Whoa. First number in each sequence like this. So then you have to fail out the other three, the other two. Second part of the quiz, you have to make up your own by multiplying by the same number uh, for each one. The bonus point will be to use a different number you multiplied for each one. So 3 and 2, we're good so far on this. 7, 24, 25, you can multiply those each by 4, why not? 7 times 4, 28. 24 times 4, that will be a bit trickier, 96. 25 times 4, that's 100. So notice that all three of these so far have multiplied by a different number. And as last one, we're going to use my favorite number to multiply by in terms of easiness, times 10. 8 times 10, 80. 15 times 10, 150. 17 times 10, 170. Multiply by 10, you add another zero each time. Some kids try to get away with it on the quiz to get the bonus by doing like times 10, the times 100, the times 1,000. I will be disallowing that for the bonus. On the bonus, they have to be significantly different, so you can't do times 2, times 20, times 200, times 2,000. Not allowed. Um, yeah. So you can't multiply by one number, then multiply by a different number, by the same number with a bunch of zeros added. And 8, 9, 10, and 11. Try these ones out. Um, these ones, some of them are ones where you're finding the hypotenuse, other ones are ones where you're finding the legs. So for instance, number 8, you have the hypotenuse that you're finding, number 9, you're finding one of the legs. I always circle hypotenuse, so I know that I set up my equation with the hypotenuse at the end. So 2 squared plus 8 squared equals x squared. And then on this one, that would be y squared plus 4 squared equals 7 squared. Try out these four problems, finish up these two, and then try out the other ones on your own. Let me just point out one more thing. I much prefer setting it up this way with our unknown at the beginning. If I'm finding one of the two legs, I'd much rather find the leg at the beginning. Uh, put it at the beginning of the equation. I find that I make less mistakes, and I find that my students make less mistakes that way. For whatever reason, if we see this equation here, 7 squared plus x squared plus 25 squared, some of us like to subtract the x squared, and we should be subtracting the 7 squared. When we see this, we, like to, we know we want to subtract the 12 squared. And that's, yeah, works out better. Anyway, see you later. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.